Hello and a very warm welcome to everybody. I am Shuja Agrawal and you are watching the Hindustan Time Leadership Studio Conversations, a coveted club where leaders talk about robust ideas and business and life and inspire the next generation of leaders on the new world economic order. With me is a very special guest today. Please help me welcome Mr. H.K. Agrawal, MD for Grass and India Industries. Mr. Agrawal. Thank you. It's a sheer pleasure and privilege to host you for what is the Leadership Studio Conversation. Thank the you. theme for today's summit really is about new world economic order. The COVID-19 pandemic, as you know, kind of disrupted the status quo for many industries. I would like to understand from you what really has the pandemic meant for your business? Thank you, Shilja. I'm delighted to be here with you. So pandemic has been hard on people and businesses all over the world. The three or four basic uh, core themes coming out is health and safety of the people is very important. So all the organizations have to take care of their people. Otherwise, they won't be able to survive. So this was the first thing every company or organization had to do. Went beyond the normal. And I think this will be a new norm in whatever times it goes. Second was the supply chains were totally disturbed. The demand was restricted first, and when demand resumed, the supplies got disrupted. So more and more things will become local production for local consumption, as much as it can be. It's very 180 degree opposite to the globalization and the make at the ma maximum competitive situation and export for the world, etc. There's a setback on that theme, but this one is also very practical and uh, I think this is going to become so Atma Nirbhar Bharat is Absolutely. again yes. a similar uh, fitment on this thing. Mm -hmm. Third theme is digitization. Like we have seen that pandemic could not uh, disturb or stop us from conducting our lives or doing business and uh, technology plays a big role. And Industry 4.0 or digitization in so many ways is going to be a big force. So all the organizations will have to adopt technology with a much more openness and much more uh, depth. And the last theme I will uh, highlight is the sustainability. This is a reality. The climate change is very visible to all of us. So all the organizations will have to work on reducing carbon footprint, uh, improve the sustainability in terms of water, air, all solid waste, and recycling. Even we are also working on how to recycle the used textiles to become raw material for us rather than buying virgin raw material. So this will be a big, big change. Thank you, Mr. Agrawal. Thanks for laying out the land for us. You spoke about four very important themes, sustainability, digitization, manufacturing 4.0, and this entire idea of being agile and putting the employees at the center and employee centricity will become extremely important. Let's talk about each of these in a bit more detail. You spoke about sustainability. So when you talk about this entire sustainability narrative, which is gaining so much more prominence right now, what has that really meant for the new playbook for Grassim? Like you mentioned, we are looking at not virgin raw material, but perhaps recycling the used clothing into raw materials. Can you perhaps elaborate a little more on that? That how are you looking at the tenet of sustainability from a Grassim point of view? At Grassim, we make viscose stable fiber and the pulp is our main raw material, which we have to import. And pulp is uh, produced with the uh, sustainable forestry means there are forests which are managed international best practices they are harvested in a responsible manner and then pulp is produced but on the other side people will not uh, people do not realize almost 100 million tons of used textile waste is generated every year and most of it goes to the landfill mm. and this is a mind boggling uh, Data. Volume. Mm -hmm. So now all the international brands and uh, retailers are thinking because they are getting the social backlash on this thing that yes. they are promoting fast fashion like you wear for three months and then discard a garment which yes. is again then creating so much of uh, landfill and waste. So how can we then if we collect, sort out and use that thing in a 
meaningful way to produce new garments rather than cutting down or getting new raw material. So we have started in a very responsible way. Rasim has made a public announcement uh, last month that in next two years we will make almost 100,000 tons of fiber based on the raw material collected waste. Mm -hmm. So, we so that's one meaningful step in this direction. So we have to do a lot of hard work like uh, collection, sorting out, uh, processing and then using it. So we are working on all these aspects and uh, this is a trend which is going to gain more and more traction in time to come. This is also meant rewiring of your business, also rethinking of the business in a certain fashion. So this entire discussion we are having about the new world economic order, I want to understand from you digitization or digital transformation have been the two words absolutely and very, very loosely bandied around and most used in this entire COVID-19 situation. I want to understand from you that what has digital transformation meant for your business? What are the things which you had to learn or perhaps more importantly unlearn as a leader? So, like at a very simple level, earlier for every meeting, people would have to travel, uh, stay in hotels and uh, wait for meeting and uh, book uh, big meeting rooms. So, that all has gone in one stroke. Now, nobody needs to travel. People can attend meetings from their place or home or wherever they are. And meetings are as efficient as they could be. So, this is just one simple example. And this has happened in even family settings, even weddings have been attended on such uh, platforms rather than having big gala gatherings. But this is a small part of the digitization. Digitization again is very different in different industries. Like financial industry has been stormed by digitization. Now customer acquisition, customer services, buying products, selling products. Re investing in uh, mutual funds, redeeming mutual funds, your investment fund, entirely, entirely digitized. People don't have to step out of their house. Absolutely. It's a phenomenal change. Like even vendors like fruits and the vegetable vendors from even remote places, they have been able to sell their products to cities and collecting money on their Paytm or on the bank accounts. And so what has it meant for your industry, for Grassim in so particular, for Grassim, as a manufacturer? We have been able to continue our production through the digital connection. We've been able to streamline our customer service uh, processes, digitization, order acquisition without uh, traveling so much. And in manufacturing also, we have employed digitization to ensure worker safety, tracing workers' uh, health in the processes where we have to work with much less number of people because people just could not come. Yep. So, Digitization has helped us to work with so much less number of people. It's improved efficiency. Improved efficiency. Improved. You, was, you also spoke about manufacturing 4.0. Can you talk a little about that? So manufacturing 4.0 is a great opportunity for the industry, especially manufacturing industry. So earlier, so many things were either unmonitored or not monitored very efficiently and will need a lot of effort and manpower. Now, all of that can be done much more effectively and much more efficiently with the help of technology. And the lot of data is generated, which was humanly not possible to make sense of it. Now, this digitization of 4.0 can have the power of computing and learning with that data and bringing out the conclusions which can help to improve the safety, productivity, efficiency, cost, quality, everything. So more and more such projects are being adopted by the companies. And there are a lot of vendors who are assisting the companies. We don't have to be technology experts to adopt that. So that's a very good part of it. You spoke about digitization, manufacturing 4.0 and sustainability at the center of what you're doing. Tell me one thing, Mr. Agarwal, if you were to ask you, what is the culture of innovation in your organization? How do you think about innovation for a company like Grasim? The first impression could really be, are they tech savvy? Are they in touch with the fashion realities of today? How digital are they? What would be your answer to those perceptions? See, for being innovative, you don't have to be technology savvy first thing. Mm -hmm. It's a habit or it's a way of thinking. Absolutely. 
innovation means to change for better mm-hmm. it can be a small thing it can be big yeah so idea is small or big is idea and innovation starts with idea mm-hmm. and then as a team are we able to encourage idea generation are we able to take those good ideas forward meaningfully or to logical conclusion that is where the difference lies so in rasim we have been encouraging these things we have achieved lot of success with ideas from the grassroots level shop low people middle level people senior level people so like in last 3 years 4 years in our plants in india we have increased the production of fiber from same plant and machinery by almost 20% without much investment we have reduced our raw material consumption of chemicals or caustic by almost 13% this is all with the encouragement to the people to think continuously think try learn from each other so this is just one example i can share so and what has the covid-19 situation really meant for you in terms of business and revenue numbers for grassim do you think you have emerged stronger or has the business been impacted adversely with this yes business was impacted in the first uh, quarter when the lockdown was imported because we could not produce or there mm-hmm. was no way but we bounced back very strongly mm-hmm. and today like we are selling almost 15% more than what we were selling pre covid in india like all the production increase is sold out fully so we are doing that much better and we are commissioning we could complete the construction of a big expansion during this covid time almost 500 million dollar investment and that just getting now into the production stage So you are really at the heart of the clothing industry. I mean that is where everything starts, the ideation, the innovation. We are called the e-commerce capital of the world just given the population and the size that we have, this large consumer population. I would like to understand from you. When you talk about the future of the fiber business or the clothing industry, what would that really be? Two or three key trends that you see. See, India is a very big country and e-commerce though increasing but still it's small in terms of total market share so it will continue to increase that is for sure but the traditional markets the wholesalers the value chain going into villages is going to remain the textile hubs like surat or bhiwandi or in uh, villages like gorakhpur calcutta they cannot be replaced in near future so traditional trade will continue to remain strong people are becoming more quality conscious people are becoming more aware of what it is like uh, they know what is cotton what is polyester what is viscose and they are making more responsible choices so the consumer of 2021 is different from the consumer say 10 years back absolutely and there is a element of aspiration people want to upgrade themselves they want to improve the quality uh, there is a sense of some fashion quotient if i can say that and who is this new consumer the more millennium 25 to 30 30 what is the cohort that you think is the crux of this i think yes that age group is definitely 20 to 30 because they are young they have now better education they have spending ability but i think even the older generation people like even above 30 or above 40 or why above 40 only even 50s and 60s like i want to spend more <laughs> like i like uh, to absolutely dress better so i think everybody so you just heard the fm in the room and you came out of it what would be your ask from the finance minister for the furthering of the manufacturing industry if you were to ask her one question what would that really be or one ask or one pitch what would that be like she, she did answer that ease of doing business has to be really done all the way not just at the center or it has to run all along so still like there are a lot of uh, bureaucratic uh, issues the industry has to depend on the state for many things especially infrastructure so that is one uh, thing of course uh, finance minister cannot do everything because a lot of these things are state uh, Uh, affairs but 
India has to focus uh, to become more competitive. So finance minister can play a very important role to make India more competitive. India as a country. That will be a big thing to propel India for future success. That's a good point. You also began this conversation by saying that globalization is not a relevant theme anymore. There is a realization and reliance on internal manufacturing. Mr. Agrawal, you are somebody who is a veteran in the manufacturing industry. I want to understand, with the supply chains being disrupted the way it was because of COVID-19, globalization seems to have become a bad word. People talking about globalization. We have already seen the cooperation between nations and where it is right now. So where is the future on the supply chain front? Do you think the reliance internally is the way forward? Uh, I would like to make some correction in the impression. I do not say that globalization is bad. I, I was trying to say that earlier there was so much focus on making globalization the only or main way of doing business Absolutely. all over the world. Mm -hmm. So it had gone to more than uh, perhaps practical. That's what I understood. Yeah. But now, of course, there are certain things which cannot be grown in, uh, say, India. We don't have land to grow trees, for example. So we cannot uh, promote wood-based industries in India beyond a point. So if uh, we have to import wood-based products or wood-based raw materials, we have to import them. So to that extent, international trade has to happen. We also want to manufacture more than what we need. So export has to happen. So, but it cannot be that 100% export oriented or 80% export oriented or 20%. There has to be a proper balance. So we have to depend on more of what is produced within India. We are talking about leadership conversations and we heard a lot of leaders in the entire COVID-19 situation talk about three or four key leadership traits. One was agility that you have to be extremely agile and move fast on digital trends. The second was clarity. You're extremely clear on what you're going to do. Third was adaptability, that you have to adapt to the moving situations. And fourth was resilience, that you are resilient even if in the face of adversity and things are not going according to your way. I want to understand from you what has been your leadership trait in the past two years, which has really held you to your own. I think leadership trait cannot be categorized in one particular thing. It is always a combination of everything. You have to have some part of everything, otherwise it's not uh, balanced. So to me, like all of these things are definitely there, but to be authentic and to be genuine has been my core sense that if I have to inspire others. If I have to lead others, then I have to be honest to myself. I have to be honest to everyone in the team. So there has to be a consistency between what I speak and what I do and what I mean. So that authenticity is very core to me. We spoke about leadership. We spoke about industries of the future, supply chain, globalization, expansion plans for Grasim. I want to understand from you 2022 and beyond. Three key areas in which you are focusing on the business, what would those really be? So, as I said, uh, all of these things, sustainability, we are investing uh, very heavily on improving our sustainability uh, quotient. We are already at a very good level in international ranking on sustainability for our industry, but still there is a lot more to do, especially on uh, reducing carbon footprints. We have to adopt digitization much more deeper so that we can serve the customers and we can be more competitive. And of course, we have to keep pace with the demand growth. So we have to continue to invest in building our capabilities so that we can serve the customers or our consumers in ahead of their requirement. So that I think is our responsibility. Okay, and it's time for some quick rapid fire before I wrap up. You have to give the answers to me in a quick word or a short sentence. One biggest challenge for you in running your business? Cope up with the demand of time. <laughs> okay, what keeps you awake in the night? Safety of people. Okay, the biggest, highest point in your career till now? Yet to come. 
yet to come <laughs> okay and the most humbling experience that you had during the covid-19 time what would that be we had uh, some fatality in our factory of uh, one employee's family and uh, he continued to work in the night that was really humbling okay and the leadership mantra that you swear by work together and enjoy together and what do you think the difference between a boss and a leader now there is no concept like boss the uh, is working together as i said work together enjoy together so there is no concept of boss in this <laughs> Okay and now if i were to ask you about the hindustan time leadership summit what has been your most significant or the important takeaway from this entire event what would that really be so ht uh, leadership summit is a really great platform to invite all the important people of the day and uh, get their ideas uh, ask very probing questions to them and uh, reveal they are uh, forced to reveal their in the thinking and uh, it's very helpful to the public it's very helpful to all the leaders and i can't leave you without asking are you following the unicorn obsession so many unicorns in india not really <laughs> when is, will we see a manufacturing unicorn come out of india when manufacturing unicorns are also coming like uh, ola is getting into e vehicle and uh, so ultimately everything uh, digital companies can do but you need the physical uh, goods and uh, to really make your life so it has to happen thank you for that mr agrawal physical is not going any way it has to be a blend of physical and digital as we see in the way forward thank you for joining us discussion on the new world economic order thank you till i see you next goodbye and good luck thank you